So in my opinion, I think DJI make the best drones on the market. And today I'm going to compare all their 250 gram drones. The advantage with the 250 gram drone is you don't need any flyer ID. So there's no online test. You just need your operator's ID, which is just simply registering with the CAA and paying nine pounds per year. And that's it. So what I'll do is I'll just go through the key features of each of those drones and then just talk about the comparison at the end. All the prices I'm going to quote are going to be the basic prices for the drone and for the NC1 or NC2, depending on which drone you're getting. Of course, they all come with a separate controller like this and with a fly more kit. But to keep it simple, I'll do it all with just using this controller where you use your mobile phone. So to start with, we're going to look at the DJI Mini 2SE. Now that starts at £309, which is about $392. And if we look at the aircraft itself, it has a maximum ascent speed of five meters per second, descent at three and a half meters per second, and a horizontal speed and no wind of 16 meters per second. To you and me, that's like 35 miles an hour. Now the maximum flight time on the batteries is 31 minutes, bearing in mind it will return to home when it's only got 20% left in the battery, so you need to take that into account. And the maximum wind speed resistance is 10.7 meters per second. That's a level five. Now if we look at the camera, it has a sensor that's a one over 2.3 inch CMOS and a 24 millimeter lens, but it's an F 2.8 and it's a 12 megapixel camera. Now that will give us an image size of about 4,000 by 3,000, which is pretty decent, but if you're cropping in on the image, you will notice the difference there. The video resolution is 2.7K and that'll be up to 30 frames per second. But the full HD, which is a 1920 by 1080, is up to 60 frames a second. Now the color mode on them is just normal mode, and it does have the quick shots. They include the Droney Helix, Rocket, the Circle Boomerang, and it does only have a downward sensor. And the video transmission is the O2, which we'll talk about later. So next, we're gonna talk about the Mini 3. Now that starts at 519 pounds, which is about $658. All the speed features are about the same. The flight time's a little longer at 38 minutes. And the camera now is a 1.3 sensor, and that will give us a 48 megapixel image. It has the 24 millimeter lens on it, but it's now an F 1.7. And this sensor will give us a image size of around 8,000 by 6,000 pixels. The video resolution now is 4K, and that'll be up to 30 frames a second. And it has the 2.7K, but it'll do it at 60 frames a second. And the Full HD is about the same. And the color mode on it is also the same, and it has similar quick shots. And the sensing is downward only, but it has precise hovering mode. And again, the video transmission is the DJI O2 system, which is the same. And next we look at the DJI Mini 3 Pro. That's now 709 pounds, which is around $900. Now the aircraft has a sport mode, a normal mode, and a cine mode, and this affects all the speeds. So basically on the controller, you'll have a, a cine mode, normal mode, and sport mode. In sport mode, the sensors won't work, but it will go at full speed. Then you've got normal, then in cine mode, you've got much lower speed, so all the movements are slowed down and more controlled. Maximum flight time is similar, it's 34 minutes, and the camera is also very similar, and it has the same sensors and lens. So it has the 48 megapixel image resolution again, and the video is 4K, and that's up to 60 frames a second, and it'll do slow motion at 120 frames per second in HD mode. And the color mode now also offers the d -cine like and Again, it has the quick shots, but now also has master shots, and the active track follow me mode. The sensors are also what we call tri-directional, 
where the obstacle avoidance will be above, below, front and behind, but still there's no sideward sensor. The video transmission now is a little better. It's the DJI 03 system, so slightly stronger signal. And then we've got the DJI Mini 4 Pro. This is now priced at £689 or $874. Now this has the cine mode, normal mode and sport mode as before and the camera is also the same with the f1.7 lens, the same sensor. But the video resolution at 4K will now film at up to 100 frames per second and the full HD mode it will do 200 frames per second. The colour mode now has HLG and D-Log M and that will be at 10 bit. It has the same quick shots and master shots, but it now has waypoints and cruise control. It has the normal active track with the follow me and the point of interest, etc. But now we can use this tracking wheel. And a major upgrade is the 360 degree omnidirectional sensor called the Binocular Vision System, which is supplemented with a 3D infrared sensor on the bottom of the aircraft. So this means it has obstacle avoidance from front, behind, above, below, but from the sides as well. And then the video transmission is the DJI 04 system now with the upgraded RCs and that gives you a much further range and a much stronger signal as well. The live view and video recording is much higher. In conclusion, if we break down the differences between these drones, the Mini 2 SE is a fabulous drone. It's great quality. It does only have that 2.8 lens, which is still amazing. It just won't be quite as good in very low light. And it has the 12 megapixel camera, which is still great quality. And the 2.7K will be fine for most people's use. Then of course you can spend a little bit more and you'll get the different sensor on the Mini 3. That'll give you 48 megapixel images, but more importantly, you get the F1.7 lens and the 4K filming at 30 frames per second. And then the Mini 3 Pro, which the 4K does 60 frames per second. So you can get slow motion in the 4K and in the 1080p, you'll get 120 frames per second. And it does have the D-Cine-like, which is a very flat profile and much better for video editors. And of course they added the active track and you've got sensors all around just apart from the sides. And when this drone came out, it was quite groundbreaking. It was incredibly popular and the hottest selling drone on the market and even to this day it's a very fantastic choice and then the mini 4 pro which is a beautiful drone that has loads of upgrades it's got the 4k 100 frames per second and at the 1080p you got 200 frames per second so the ability to do slow motion is amazing and now the d log m which can do 10 bit giving us so many more colors for video editors and then of course adding waypoints and cruise control along with this very cool tracking wheel for the active track and then of course not to mention the 360 degree sensors makes it a very very safe drone to fly the screen recordings are much higher quality and the signal strength is much much better than any drone before. In my mind, it was a no brainer. I'd rather pay the extra money and get the Mini 4 Pro with all these amazing features. But if you don't need them all, then these are all fantastic drones and it just depends what your needs are and what your budgets are. And do you need these extra features or do you just want them to play with? So I hope this has been useful and it's helped you break down the differences between these drones and if you want to know more about drones then there's a playlist over here please show me the love subscribe to the channel over here and hopefully i will see you over there